Okay, this is now the Tower of Process part 11. And next is going to be the Celtic Cross part th uh, card number three. But a couple of things happened in the last few days and I wanted to give you something different or something else. Th this, this video is called Name Your Path. And I'll get to why it's called that in a bit. But... Um, in a way, doing a video is a bit like doing a reading because I've got a few ideas that I want to, or a couple of points that I want to make and a couple of sub points, so to speak, so that it, it's clear what I'm talking about. And it's a bit like with the reading, you know, you, you, you've got a basic idea of what cards mean but and you know the question, but you don't know what cards are going to come up. So when you turn a card, you then have to figure it out as you go along. And in the same way, I've got a rough idea of what I, what I want to cover. And so I'm going to talk about geometry, coding, road and path, and something about the law of attraction as well at the end. Um, so I, I've got ideas about what to say about geometry and why I'm going to talk about geometry. But I don't know word for word what I'm going to say before I've done it. So you might want to consider that with a reading that you, you've got a basic idea of what cards mean but until you actually see what cards come up you don't know what you're going to say okay so I've got I need to just move this okay um, okay so these two points that I'm going to make um, on the one hand it's going to develop your understanding of what the tarot is and what it can do but on the other hand, or the second point is that what I'm going to tell you at the end, I think is going to improve your life in all different ways forever. Not that I'm holding it back to the end to keep you watching, but it's just that I, I'd like to um, talk a little bit first about geometry and then coding and then road and path. It'll all make sense as we get to the end. So geometry and I, I used to hate geometry in high school. You've probably done geometry. And I hated it because with with geometry, you've got rules like parallel lines, you've got certain properties, and all the angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees. So if they tell you two angles, you can figure out the third. Right. So it's that kind of problem solving or up, you, you've got rules and you've got fact, facts, and then you have to put them together to prove something. And so it was really annoying because I, we would get geometry homework and I would go in the, ne the, the next day and say to my friends, did you figure out the geometry? And they'd all say yes. And I couldn't figure it out. Then when they showed me the solution, it was so easy and so obvious. But I struggled with geometry. And the reason I'm talking about this is because with a tarot reading, with, with geometry, there's only one answer. And you can prove something and it's the answer. But with the tarot, there isn't just one answer. A card doesn't mean just one thing. And the answer to a question isn't just one idea or one action to take or one outcome. There's all sorts of possibilities. There's maybe a, not an infinite variety of possibilities, but there's a lot of possibilities. So when you're reading cards for somebody else, remind yourself periodically there isn't just one answer here. I'm dealing with multiple possibilities and I'm going to figure out, or I, the reader, I'm going to figure out what makes sense with the cards that come up and what they point to and what the question is. I'm going to give some suggestions of what a card, what on what the answer is. This means that if you're dealing with reverse cards, it's not just that a reverse card means this and that's it and it's finished. A reverse card can mean multiple different things. And that's as it should be, because we're dealing with tarot cards, not geometry. The second part has to do with coding. Um, I need to look here because I've got bits and pieces scribbled down. Coding. OK, so if you want to learn CSS, right, it's a kind of code for websites, um, you can't start in the middle. You need to go to the beginning and understand what a declaration is and what and and how the syntax should be because you need semicolons and spaces and if you leave out the space the css isn't going to work so with learning to code 
you start at the beginning and you work your way through it. Whereas when we when we begin with the tarot, it's not like we're at the beginning because we've lived a certain amount. We're maybe twenty years old or forty years old. We've had experiences. We've had we've we've lived life. We've made mistakes. We've learned things. We've think the things we should have learned that we didn't. And that's the kind, that's the the state that you're in when you when you first look to the tarot. Whereas with coding, you start from knowing nothing is the best way to go. Whereas with the tarot, you already know something. It's not that you're starting from nowhere, you're starting from somewhere. And that I think is important to remember as well. When you come to, so maybe some of the studies you've been involved in or the the ideas you've thought about will help you when it comes to the tarot, but some of them won't and some of them will get in the way. And I think that's important to remember as well when it comes to reading the tarot, that we start somewhere we start from somewhere not from nowhere um uh okay then i wrote down road and path okay um what, what's the difference between a road and a path if, if i say to you what what does a road look like what's a road then we know it's kind of permanent way of getting from point A to point B. But if you're on a road driving a car, maybe you need a vehicle if you're going to be on a road. Whereas if you're on a path, you can walk. And if you're on a, a road and there's there's barriers on either side in, in the middle, if it's a four-lane highway, two going in one direction, two going in the other, you've got lines in the road to make sure that you... You, you you stay in your lane and maybe you've got um, barriers at the side to stop going off the road. Whereas if you're on a path, you can walk along, you can speed up, slow down, you can go off the path, get lost, come back to your path again. You can't do that on a road because the road is, and if you do get off the road, you get stuck in a ditch. You know, so roads are very different things from paths. And there's a book, The Road Less Travelled, um, but I'm thinking about, because the, the title of this video is Name Your Path, and I'm going to get to that in a minute. Um, but roads are one thing, and paths are something else. You can go much faster on a road, and maybe on a road you're thinking about the destination and the exit, like you've got 12 miles to go and then you can get off this road. Whereas if you're on a path, your thinking is kind of different because you're wandering and maybe you're ad admiring the view and you're stopping periodically and thinking. So a path is a much more, it's a very different kind of road or route to be on than a road is. But a lot of people, a lot of times we think we're on the road, our life is a road leading somewhere, but maybe our life really, the best way to think about it is a path. And we can wander and go slow. We can go. F we can speed up and go a lot quicker. Um, and we can, we, maybe we run, but at other times we slow. We, we we slow down and we walk. But if you're on a road, you can't do it like that. So, what one of the points of this ramble? You can ramble on a path, but you can't ramble on a road. If you ramble on the road, everybody gets annoyed and starts blowing their horn and you get road rage. You don't get path rage. So there's a difference and you know, you know all of this. So if, let, let, let's say you're in a small town and you say to somebody, a local, how do we get to this place? And they say to you, go along that road for a couple of miles and turn left. You don't say, what do you mean road? Because you already know what a road is. And the reason I'm going on like this is because when somebody say, when somebody says, what, what does this card mean? You don't say, what does a road mean? Well, a road means there's been civilization and, and heavy equipment and tarmacadam to cover the road and pounding the, the, the gravel down to make a good surface. And, you know, that, that, that's what a road means in an extended kind of a way. But what does a card mean? What, what, what does a road mean doesn't really make sense as a question. And I'm saying, what does a card mean doesn't make much sense either. Because I think the question should be more, um, what, what is a particular card about? 
And so somebody a couple of days ago emailed me about, she'd been asking questions or playing and she wanted to know how this fellow feels about her. And she kept getting the strength card, so she wanted to know what I would make of the strength card. So if you think about what's the strength card about, you've got a woman closing the lion's mouth. So how does he feel about her? She's in control because the woman is closing the mouth of the lion. The lion is a, is a male lion, but um, even so, the woman is in charge because you look at the picture and that's what the, 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 the card shows the woman closing the lion's mouth. It's about who's in, who's in control because we've got the woman closing the lion. It's about developing strength as well, whatever that might mean. But so on the one hand, how does he feel about her? She's in control, she's in charge, and he doesn't mind because the strength was upright. If the strength of card had been upside down, then she's in control and he doesn't like it. But the fact that the strength card was upright, she's in control and he's happy with that or he, he's, he put up with it. But the other thing is you, you can understand what's going on inside his own thinking. And within him, we've got the woman closing the lion's mouth. So the woman, we can say it's his feminine side, but that's kind of a loaded expression and it's too difficult to, to deal with. So why don't we say that the woman represents practicality? Because women are much more practical than men and women are more sensible than men as well. Because men go off to war and get killed. Women sing, you know, don't do that, stay home. Okay, so the woman, in, we're looking at his state of mind and we've got the woman closing the lion's mouth. So his practical side or sensible side is controlling what he says or what he is able to say because it's the mouth where we speak that's being closed or held closed by the woman. And that's what the card is about rather than what does it mean. So asking what the card mean is so it's such a it's a dead end question. Whereas what's the card about? That's open ended and we can get somewhere with it. So the other thing about I need to scroll down the page a bit here. Um okay, so in books about the law of attraction and all that kind of stuff, um, they talk about how basically we get back what we give out. Right? So if you're if you're if you're focusing on what's wrong, you're going to get more of what's wrong. Whereas if you focus on what's right or what you want or where you're going or what you want to get, then you've got a better chance of it coming into your life. So um, the thing is, if you're feeling low or distressed, then you can say to yourself, wait a minute, I should be positive. And then you, you, you try to make yourself be positive. But you know you're pretending because deep down you know that you're miserable and you're depressed or you're not confident. And you can't really talk yourself into being confident. So I'm suggesting that what we do instead of trying to make ourselves different, think about what path you're on. Give your path a name. So the other thing is, you, you can say you're on the road to success, but that, 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 that means you haven't arrived yet. So you're still, you're giving out, I haven't arrived yet, so you're going to get back, you haven't arrived yet, and things that go with that. Whereas instead of the path to success or the path to well, think about the path of because if you're on the path to wellness, you haven't arrived yet. Whereas if you're on the path of wellness, then you pay attention to what comes to you or what you come across on your wandering along the path of wellness or the path of wealth or the path of understanding. So if you're on the path of wellness, you come across articles that tell you don't eat this stuff or do this or exercise more or whatever, it do meditation, whatever it happens to be. Then because you're on the path of wellness, you automatically do the things that belong on that path. And it gives you a way of understanding what to do and what not to do. And if you're on the path of wellness, 
you're going to bump into people who in educate you, who instruct you, who give you good ideas or give you good information because you're on that particular path. Um, so name your path. What, what's your path going to be? What path are you choosing to be on? And we get to choose. Are you going to be on the path of... Because the thing is, so, some people, everybody wants to be wealthy, except when you think about it, you don't want to be wealthy. So, it's, so a lot of people, do you want to be wealthy or do you want to be financially comfortable? And I think most people want to be financially comfortable. They don't want to have to deal with wealth and investment and bankers and worrying about the money and worrying about share prices. And, you know, a million dollars is a million worries, somebody once said. So for a lot of people, you want to be on the path of financial comfort. And that means that you, you, you the example I thought of before was you need a potato peeler. Let's say you peel potatoes. Um, and you go into a store and you can get a $1 potato peeler that will last for a couple of years. But you can also get a $25 potato peeler that's made of stainless steel and will last for 20 years. So if you're on the path of financial comfort, buy the dollar potato peeler. It's good enough. It'll keep you going for a while. Whereas if you're on the path of wealth, get the $25 potato peeler because it's more in keeping with being wealthy because you can afford it. Whereas if you want financial comfort, why are you going to waste $25 on a, on a potato peeler? So you get a different way of thinking that's automatically correct for uh, d depending on what path you're on. So that's kind of it. So th think about reading cards, but also name your path. So give yourself a few days to think about what the name of the, what, what do you want to be on the path of? And maybe you're on a path for a while and then you switch to another path. But it's just the idea of being on the path of something or other that you actually choose or that you actually want. Okay, that's the end. I'll talk to you in a bit. Thank you very much for watching. I don't know what else to say. Okay, bye-bye.